best way of getting rid of bad laws is to enforce them. And so in some ways, the federal government is really helping us all now by trying to enforce these bad laws. We need to look at what is happening here in our country. Marijuana is the largest cash crop in the state of California. You know what number two is? Grapes, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Let's regulate marijuana like wine. That will work. People are beginning to understand. They see what is happening. They see that marijuana is here to stay. Let's bring it out from under the shadows. Let's understand what is happening in the law. And I give an indictment to, the, to Sacramento and the state government today. We as the voters passed Prop 215 back in when? 1996, 15 years ago, and still we don't have a system of regulations. People who are trying to set up medical marijuana dispensaries don't really know what the laws are, what they're supposed to do. People that are the customers don't know either, and the police don't know as well. What's the matter with Sacramento? They've had plenty of time, and I issue them this ultimatum, that it's time for you to follow the law, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, and set up the regulations so we all understand. They don't know what to do with Lieutenant Commander Goldstein and Deputy Chief Downing and even Judge Jim Gray because we have been drug warriors. We have fought this fight and we have looked from our own knowledge, our own observations, saying this isn't the right way to go and besides, it isn't working. We can only get better from here. Treat hemp like cotton, treat marijuana like wine. These are things that the voters of California will begin to understand. They are. The California Medical Association very recently has endorsed the concept of treating marijuana like wine. The Gallup poll has come out with an initiative with a poll just this past week saying 50% of Californians believe in the legalization of marijuana. So that's where we're going, folks. This is what it's all about. I get a little bit of email. Why are you doing this? I said, well, this just, this initiative protects me and the dispensaries and, and the Absolutely. dispensary system. I think we're your only hope. Uh, yeah. The way things, the forces are gathering here. Commander. Um, hi, my name is Diane Goldstein. I'm a retired lieutenant from Redondo Beach Police Department. What I did want to talk about a little bit is some recent stuff or some reports that have come out uh, from the International Association of Chiefs of Police. They recently released a report titled Law Enforcement Priorities for 2011 and Beyond. This was based on survey results from 731 law enforcement leaders. The report offered 12 strategies that would facilitate the collaboration of researcher and practitioner that includes law enforcement agencies, institutions of higher learning, professional organizations, and funders both from the public and the private sector. Some of the identified research themes and the results included the examination of drugs and alcohol as well as the future of policing, which we're all concerned for. This report is laudable and properly moves law enforcement into the 21st century by recognizing that scientific, evidence-based practices can result in cost-effective strategies in achieving public safety goals. The recent lack of leadership and aggressive enforcement action by the Federal Department of Justice impacts all of us and helps to entrench the war on drugs culture, which is really not a war on drugs, but a war on legal business owners such as Lynette, patients, taxpayers in all our communities. This demonstrates that as a profession we have moved away from what our job descriptions were. Always first and foremost as peace officers serving our communities and finding the truth wherever that truth may be. Instead our leaders both on the federal and state level have established their ability to cherry pick research and reports that continues to validate the status quo. This has resulted on pressure on le legitimate research institutions such as RAND to pull a recent report that did not support the views held by law enforcement and city leaders regarding dispensaries. All the while, the drug czar and the DEA still profess that the National Institute on Drug Abuse is unbiased. This, in spite of a 2010 statement by a spokeswoman who admitted that their focus on research is simply on the negative consequences of marijuana use and they do not fund research based on the potential beneficial medical effect of marijuana. As a retired law enforcement profession professional, I find the parallel of not searching for the truth and facts is any different than withholding exculpatory evidence proving a defendant's innocence. So I ask now that the IACP has demonstrated the value and the importance of research in developing evidence-based practices, are our public safety leaders willing to listen? 
or will things remain the same with an ongoing war on our families, our neighbors, and our friends that continues to erode the respect that law enforcement once had? The parallels of prohibition in today are now too large to ignore. The vision of a drug-free America is not attainable in a free society such as ours, which should respect the constitutional constraints that pre protect us both as individuals and as citizens of our own states from the heavy hand of overreaching federal intervention. The war on drugs is about a lot of things, but it's only rarely that it's really about drugs. I'm a retired Deputy Chief of Police from the Los Angeles Police Department and a member of the Board of Directors of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. This year, in this economy, after spending $1.2 trillion on 40 years of failure, the administration's drug warriors received their largest budget in history. And in spite of the fact that the sky hasn't fallen since we legalized medical marijuana in California 15 years ago, they are spending that new round of money like sharks in a feeding frenzy to attack our medical cannabis patients. The president's drug warriors fired a broad range of very ugly, hypocritical, and ethically twisted legal weapons on the people of California last week. They are buying off our local police and sheriff departments. The administration has allocated $72 million to our chiefs of police and sheriffs in order to divert 192 of our local police officers once again from responsible evidence-based police deployments in order to carry out their assault on the sovereignty of the people of California. Using their grant money and the lure of budget dollars through asset seizures, they have successively co-opted our police and sheriff's department to support their misguided war on drugs. Our supervisors, city managers, and local city councils have become so addicted to the flood of drug grants and asset seizure dollars that many now require our chiefs to make this predatory money-making requirement a deployment priority over their public safety considerations. A different kind of quota, but still a quota, an ugly quota, and much more dangerous than the fallout on drug quotas we are seeing today in New York City. Today I would like to call upon our police chiefs and sheriffs to opt out of the federal war on drugs. You, our chiefs and sheriffs, have no obligation to enforce federal drug laws. You can say no. Tell them that you want no part of this attack on the sick and infirm who depend upon their legally approved cannabis medicine in this state. Finally, I would like to call upon the voters of California to support the 2012 initiative regulate marijuana like wine. If our chiefs and sheriffs do not voluntarily opt out and the feds come along with their bribe money after it's passed, they will have to say no, we can't help you. It's against California law. You're on your own. Regulate, mar <laughs> regulate marijuana like wine is the only means we have left to oppose the might of the prohibitionists and their federal drug warriors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Downing. It is about standing up for the sovereignty of the state of California. I truly believe that I, as an adult and a voter in California, am smart enough, wise enough, and able enough to decide how we're going to treat this issue.